Today I'll make a short video answering two questions. Would we fly off at the equator, since after all it is going faster than a thousand miles an hour? And second, how much would we weigh at the equator versus the poles? Uh, both of these questions are answered in Flat Math 103b, but I'm going to make a standalone video here and hopefully just in a few minutes we can get it accomplished. There is the world, and we have two people. We have Mr. Green standing on the North Pole, and Mr. Blue standing on the equator. If it is spinning, as they say, it spins once every 24 hours. So one revolution in 24 hours. Okay, so we'll begin just with a rough number. It's not terribly accurate. Uh, the radius of the Earth being 4,000 miles. If the radius is 4,000, then the circumference or the equatorial distance is going to be 2 times pi times the radius. So 2 pi 4,000. We get 25, 132 miles. 25,132 miles. So first, we have miles and we have hours. One revolution is equal to 25,132. So then the velocity, we can say, is 25,132 divided by 24 hours. And our units are going to match properly. We're going to have miles upstairs, hours downstairs, which makes it a per hour. So I'm going to divide this by 24, and we get 1047. I'm using pens because my previous videos do not show up well when I'm using a pencil. So yes, there's an equatorial velocity of over 1,000 miles an hour. But the question is, would we fly off? So what we actually need to calculate is what is often referred to as the centrifugal force. Well, the centrifugal force is a fictitious force. There is the centripetal force, and the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. Since we know that F is equal to mass times acceleration, we can clean this up and say, we're not going to be concerned with the mass of the blue man. We're just going to save that. So we can simplify this equation, the force equation, into the acceleration equation, which is the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R. And this is not theoretical math. If you have a weight on a string and you have a spring connecting it, you actually can measure the force. And this is accurate. All right. So now we have the acceleration of the blue man as he stands this way and goes around this way. Now, the force of gravity, or the gravitational effect, is pulling the blue man toward the center of the Earth and that's real. That's why we don't fly off. We're being pulled to the center of the Earth. But there also is the centrifugal effect, which again comes from the centripetal effect, and it basically says if this man were to stay in motion, in a circular motion of uh, around the 25,000 equatorial distance, if he were to maintain in that motion, it would require a centripetal acceleration of v squared over r. There is no rope pulling him to the earth. So it is the absence of the rope. There is no rope. It is the absence of the rope that makes it seem like he might fly off. This orange vector is smaller than the green one. 
That's correct. Um, so the acceleration due to gravity is about 32 feet per second squared. So the question is, what is the centripetal acceleration or the lack of the centripetal acceleration causing a centrifugal effect? So V squared, V is 1047 miles squared divided by the 4,000 mile radius. Um, 1047 is miles per hour. Sorry about that. So we have 1047 squared divided by 4,000 and we get 274 and change. So it's 274 and upstairs we're going to have a miles squared an hour squared, and downstairs, a mile. The mile downstairs cancels one of the two miles upstairs, and we're left with 274 miles per hour squared. So this is the, this would be the centripetal acceleration, or the lack thereof, causing a centrifugal effect. Now, we don't usually use these units, and we can't compare feet per second to miles per hour. So we need to convert this. So we have 274 miles. This is called dimensional analysis, where you're very deliberately changing the units. We want to cancel out the mile. One mile is equal to 5,280 feet. We want to cancel out the hours. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. But the hours are squared. So that unit needs squared. Why they're called a unit is because anything divided by itself is equal to one. So 5280 feet is equal to one mile. So everything in parentheses is really just a, a one. So we can multiply by this all day long without changing the value of our acceleration. So it's gonna be 274 times 5280 divided by 3600 and divided by 3600. So the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration is 0 0.11 feet per second squared. The acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second squared. So if the force of gravity is, so let's, let's divide that out, 32 divided by 0 0.11, 290. In this, the acceleration due to gravity is 290 times more powerful than the centripetal acceleration. So how is this going to affect us? I happen to weigh about 200 pounds. So if I am standing on the surface of the Earth, I will be a blue man. Gravity is pulling me down 32 feet per second per second. The centrifugal effect seems to be pulling me upwards. What really is happening is the earth is disappearing underneath me. And the magnitudes are 32 and 0 0.11. If under 32, 32 feet per second squared, I equal 200 pounds. Now I am mixing units, uh, but it will turn out all right. At 32 feet per second, I weigh this. So we can do some cross multiplying. 32 feet per second over 200 is equal to 0 0.11 divided by the weight at the equator. The 32 belongs with the 200, the 0.11 belongs with the effect here. How much would I weigh? So we want to solve for the weight at the equator, so we're going to multiply that across and this across. So we will get 0.11 times 200 divided by 32. And that comes out the weight of me at the equator, or the weight associated with this, is 0 0.68.
uh, that's not my weight at the equator, that's the change in the weight, sorry. So 200 pounds minus uh, two thirds of a pound. I weigh 200 pounds at the pole, and at the equator, I weigh 199.32. My weight at the equator has been decreased by two-thirds of a pound. So my question is, can you feel it? If I weighed 100, it would have gone down by a third of a pound. No, you cannot feel it. Ten ounces of water weighs two-thirds of a pound. A pint of water is two pounds. I mean, one pound. So if I were to drink ten ounces of water, that would make up the difference between my weight at the equator and my weight at the pole. This cannot be measured. It is too small. The altitude has at least as much effect when you go up a mountain to 10,000 feet. This has as much effect on the perceived weight as the centrifugal effect of being at the equator spinning a thousand miles an hour. So would we fly off? No. Gravity is 290 times more powerful than the centripetal acceleration due to the spinning. Next question, how much would I weigh at the equator? Well, I'd go down by a third of a percent or two thirds of a pound. Can I feel that? No. Now the reason why we can't feel it, other than it being too small, is the fact that the centrifugal effect and the gravitational pull are in the same axis. One is pulling you up, one is pulling you down. Now if they were lateral, we'd have a different story. If gravity pulled you down, and the centrifugal effect pulled you sideways, well, then we'd be able to feel it. We'd be able to notice it. We could do experiments to find it. But since we are all in the same axis, we can't feel it. It is like laying down in bed and suddenly gaining two-thirds of a pound. All it would do is slightly, ever so slightly, increase the pressure into your mattress. You would not feel it. So the main reason why it's indiscernible is the fact that the centrifugal effect is so much smaller than the perceived effect of gravity. And secondly, because they are in the same axis. So there are some interesting things with the Earth supposedly spinning, and we'll get to those. But for now, how much would I weigh at the equator versus the pole? Uh, about a third of a percent difference. And would we fly off? Absolutely not. I'll see you next time.